welcome today to our Understanding and Challenging Our Limiting Beliefs virtual boardroom that's being facilitated by HR Recruit and Marion Hewitt. My name is Jo Thompson and I'm a consultant for HR Recruit. I'm joined today by Marion who will introduce herself shortly. Marion will be delving into how our limiting beliefs often aim to safeguard us and how she'll also guide us through strategies to challenge and mitigate their impact on our lives. If you've got any burning questions during the session, then please put them into the chat box facility and we'll cover them as we go along. Without further ado, I'll pass the floor to Marion to introduce herself and kick off the event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to see people see some familiar names uh, on the list. Um, yeah, Joe jo and I have done quite a lot of these over the years. So I'm um, looking forward to this one when we're talking about understanding and challenging our limiting beliefs. Um, my route to doing this, um, my background a lot of years in, in HR, different sectors, developed a particular interest in well-being, mental health, and particularly uh, positive psychology, that, that science of making life better. And sort of challenging, um, or li looking at our limiting beliefs is kind of part of all of that. So I think it's uh, a really interesting area to talk about, to consider some of the beliefs we hold about ourselves and how often these are not helpful and how actually they can restrict us in some way. So what I'd like us to think about today is how, as a starting point, recognising that our limiting beliefs are there to actually try and protect us and keep us safe at some level. But actually have an awareness that that limiting is holding us back and then think a bit more about some of those strategies that we might be able to adopt uh, to reduce them and overcome them. I, I, sadly, I can't promise that in a 45 minutes time, you're suddenly going to overcome all your limiting beliefs and life's amazing, but just help us to reframe, think about it a bit more uh, in a way that could help you. Uh, so let's actually start by thinking about, think about this part. If you woke up tomorrow morning and you weren't limited by any beliefs, what would be happening? So I'm going to invite you to put things into the chat. So I'll put my slide down for a minute because I then I can't, can't see the chat when I've got slides up. So what would be happening if you were not being limited by those beliefs? Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. Celebrate. Lots of public speaking. Free. Yes, yes. I like that one. That sense of being liberated from the things that are holding you back. Feeling at best all the time. Start something I'm shying away from yet because those limiting beliefs are usually the things that are ambushing us. More confidence. Less self-doubt, yeah. yeah. So actually just you know, think about that, think about what that would really feel like. And actually part of that, then you can actually start to also recognize perhaps what are some of those things that are inadvertently holding you back. There's a recognition that if there weren't there, the absence of that, um, there you go. Yes, yeah, there's some goals we can put around some of these as well, perhaps. But just think about that. that some. And the problem is that the limiting beliefs are things that we are holding in our mind, in our unconscious mind, that we are taking as true beliefs we hold about ourselves that we accept as being true and which have the impact of holding us back in some way but before we start beating ourselves up about the fact that we've got limiting beliefs and that that is as another one actually recognize that limiting beliefs are trying to keep us safe when we don't um try and do something we if we say we have a limiting belief so that I'm not good enough then I'm not going to try for something and then I don't put myself in the place that I'm going to fail so it keeps me safe from putting it out there it's trying to prevent us from going into a place that feels uncomfortable psychologically uncomfortable and there's a whole range of limiting beliefs um what limiting beliefs come to mind? What limiting beliefs would people recognise as out there? You don't have to share them as being your own, but what limiting beliefs are out there? So some thoughts into the chat. 
just looking at some of the comments, you're better at my job without the fear of how people will judge me. But, um, you yeah, know, yeah, they found me out. I can't do this job. Not good enough. Not good enough is a very common, yeah, not experienced. I can see overlaps with some other things. I'm fake. Yeah. yeah. Sad, isn't it, when you read those? Because they're not true. They're just those messages that we're telling ourselves. So very common ones are that fear of failure, not feeling good enough, fear of rejection, don't fit in, too young, too old, not clever enough, or even strangely fear of success, which at one level always seems a strange one. But actually, if we succeed in something, we're then going to be perhaps visible or um, something else will happen that will then be frightening in itself. Um, so we avoid doing the things that actually um, will make us successful and hold ourselves back um, from that perspective. But the outcome of this, which you know we're doing to look after ourselves, we're doing with the best intentions, is holding us back. It, they are preventing us from becoming the best version of ourselves, whatever that be. It's not actually a phrase I like very much, but I can never think of one that works any better but you know what I mean um it will lead us to miss out on things and I think perhaps actually the, that's the one that frustrates me the most in terms of what I know as my limiting beliefs all the things that I effectively deprive myself of doing because that inner voice is, is stopping me going out of the place that feels comfortable but actually we recognize that they are deep within our unconscious mind. And we'll look at that um, in a few minutes, but you know, that's why we can't just suddenly change our thinking. It's not as simple as sort of telling ourselves that's not true. So um, it's how we can. But how does, do these limiting beliefs actually affect us in a wider way? how we feel about ourselves and they impact in many ways and how we think how we feel they'll impact our, our mental health our physical health and we can see how they're linked to things like imposter syndrome low self-compassion lack of self-acceptance and if we look at this this is in relation to our psychological well-being and this is a particular model that talks about what are the things that contribute to our psychological well-being which is kind of our, our mental health and if we've got limiting beliefs in terms of areas of those, it's going to um, impact us. So if we have um, limiting beliefs in relation to our growth, so we're not good enough, we're not clever enough, um, that's going to stop us learning and growing, which will impact us. If we think we're not good enough or people won't like us or people are making judgments about us, it's going to impact the relationships we, we have on life. It can even impact our ability to be authentic. You know, if we think we show up as our real self, um, then it can impact how people are, are judging us. And it can be that some of those limiting beliefs that make us think that we can't show up as we are. And self-acceptance is a crucial part of our overall uh, psychological health. And we want to aim for a place of unconditional self-acceptance. And that's definitely part of our psychological well-being. It means that we're not allowing ourselves to grow if we're not accepting who we are. If we believe we're not enough, if we're looking in the mirror and thinking, I'm not good enough, I'm not clever enough, people won't like me. We're holding ourselves back because there are lots of negative impact of a lack of self-acceptance. What we want to do is be able to look in the mirror, accept all elements of ourselves and then build and grow from that without holding ourselves back. Several of the comments that people put into the chat are actually imposter syndrome, aren't they? Which is effectively a limiting belief. It's that limiting belief, that fear that you're going to be found out. Somebody's put, you know, that they're a fake, that they're winging it. Um, where despite having levels of uh, good levels of accomplishment and achievement, actually, there's still a high level of self-doubt. The, the links to beliefs of not being good enough. So imposter syndrome is ultimately a framing, a format of limiting beliefs. People that know my sessions know I'm going to put in self-kindness and self-compassion somewhere um, because it is an area that I've got a particular interest in. And being kinder to ourselves has so many benefits in relation to our health and our performance. And by their very nature, limiting beliefs have a negative narrative. 
And actually the extensive research shows the power of having a kinder narrative, changing that inner critic to an inner coach or a friend. So limiting beliefs are usually linked in some way to our sense of self. So elements like self-worth, lack of self-acceptance and other disempowering emotions that are hard to change. But actually, if we are embracing who we are, if we're accepting who we are, if we are kinder to ourselves, if we have that inner coach rather than that inner critic, if we talk to ourselves internally as we would to somebody we cared about, what the research shows us is all the outcomes in terms of um, how we achieve, how we feel, what we do, our overall health and well-being, the outcomes will be positive. So whilst limiting beliefs are trying to keep us safe, actually it's flawed thinking because in other ways they're affecting us and holding us back. So it's just a bit of background and um, some of that sort of mind where I've sort of linked things together from different areas, but you can see how they overlap and how they will link to different things. This is the first thing to recognize. <laughs> beliefs are not facts, they're beliefs. But they can stop us reaching our potential. They can feel us, allow us to feel inadequate or powerless. And then that lack of action will hold us back. We'll apply for a job in a half-hearted way because we don't think we're good enough. And then when we don't get it, we use that evidence to reinforce that belief, that self-fulfilling prophecy element of it. And often, you know, I said it's about safety. Limiting beliefs are trying to keep us safe and therefore there's a link to fear. We're frightened of something. If I, delete, if I believe I'm not good enough, then I won't um, try for something. I'll be too frightened to try. And the more we get stuck into that negative cycle of small talk to ourselves, the harder it can become to overcome. And we create that downward spiral. We find that proof that we knew we weren't good enough. Look, I didn't manage to get that job. I didn't do that well. That proves it. And we can create that downward spiral in terms of our narrative and the impact it has on, on all elements of our life. So it is important to recognise the impact that those beliefs have on us. And actually, the reverse of that is true. If we can reframe some of those things, if we can have much more positive um, approach to things, then it really empowers us to do things. It reminds me of that um, Henry Ford quote, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. So how we are framing something. So if we can work to change our beliefs, our lives can be transformed effectively by opening up new experiences and emotions think back to that first question yeah what are, if you woke up tomorrow morning and you weren't held back by those beliefs all the things that you would then be embracing and doing and, and all those things that you were saying are probably things that you would love to be doing so that gives you very clear evidence that the belief whilst it's trying to protect you is not actually serving you well So, but say, remember, they're created from a place of kindness and trying to protect us. But they're not facts. They're views, they're opinions, they're interpretations. Fear is an emotion. It's a response. It's not a reality. So let's think of some of the, the details that, that are uh, that show us how that comes about. We have around 30 billion brain cells. That creates the potential for around 100,000 chemical reactions as we think. So the potential number of thought, of thought patterns are effectively infinite. The brain is pretty clever. It is pretty effective. It processes around 11 million bits of information per second in the unconscious mind. So most of what we do, most of what we think, most of what happens has to be unconscious. We can't think and learn everything every day. You can't remember after learn to talk and walk and everything every day. We have to program most of what we know so that we can draw on it unconsciously. Our conscious mind can only process around seven plus or minus a couple of bits of information per second. That means that our unconscious mind is always going to be far more powerful than our conscious mind. If we want to bring about change, we have to bring some of those thoughts and responses from that unconscious place into our conscious place. 
So most of our limiting beliefs are going to be things that are just our default ways of thinking. And most of the time, that's efficiency. We have to think of it. We have to have that default response because we don't have time to question everything. But if we want to do things differently, we have to find that, that idea of catching that space between how there is some trigger and how we respond to respond differently. But actually, where do beliefs even start from? Where do they come from? And there's different schools of thought, but one theory is that it's linked to our development. And actually, they often start from uh, very early on, from before the ages, uh, before the age of seven, a lot of them are rooted. So when sort of the first couple of years, we are generally learning through a more sensory experience, through feel and taste as babies explore the world. And then in the next stage between sort of two and seven, people, uh, children are learning to make a bit more sense of the world. They're talking and they are embedding beliefs based on things that are told to them, but they take it as fact because at that point, there isn't the skills to actually manipulate and challenge information. If somebody is told something, they'll take that as fact and store it away. So if somebody is told they're stupid, then they'll file that away as that's the fact, they're stupid. And as we grow, as we learn the ability to develop more logical thinking, more analytical skills, abstract skills, deductive skills, what often happens is we don't go back and challenge that. We've still got that belief that we have, that knowledge that we think we've got, although it's only a belief that that was true. And that can carry on and affect us for years to come. And you may actually even remember a particular thing that somebody said to you at a very young age that stuck with you forever. I can remember as clearly as anything at primary school being asked to read something out. And because I was really nervous, I remember I was being, I was really out of breath by the end of it. And, and I, it was my idea of how doing, having to do it. And I remember the teacher at the end saying, oh, you silly girl. And that stuck with me as that mantra of that's that's how I was, or silly girl. And that stayed with me for a very long time. And she wouldn't have meant anything. It was just a passing comment. But in terms of the way my brain stored things and didn't question it at the time, I was taking that as what was true. So how we create thoughts and beliefs will be influenced by lots of things. So they can be the experience that we've lived ourselves. They can be hereditary cultural things that we are that are related to the world so things that we believe in the way that we were brought up they can be linked to fear or an excuse think, you know if you're brought up to think that things everything's dangerous you we can create that as a limiting belief which stops us trying things the social circles around us can influence us society can so there's lots of things that can influence how we develop beliefs, the type of beliefs. But quite often they will stem from just comments that were made in a very early stage of our development before we actually looked at the evidence or challenged it or recognised it as a one-off comment. This is um, another way of thinking about this, actually, is the map is not the territory. So it comes from, from NLP, Neurolinguistic Programme. So what we think is not the reality. We are making an internal representation of it, if you like. So when we look at the map of something, that is a way of describing something. It's not the same as experience something. So when we are thinking about something, that is how we have chosen to interpret it. It's not the reality. So we need to think differently, need to recognise that so we can then challenge them. So what types of limiting belief might we have? We might have them in relating to the world. We might believe that that's just how things are, that we won't check, can't think, change things. We might think that things are outside our control. And as a result of that, we don't want to try and do anything. Time is a very common one. Um, the fact I won't have enough time, haven't got enough time. Whereas everything is always about a choice of how we use our time. 
Denial is linked to a lot of them in relation to how we look at that. I won't be good enough, rich enough, successful enough, loved. They're all things that we are making um, beliefs in relation to our world. And then beliefs relating to other people about those are the ones that are related to how people think about us. You know, people think I'm boring, stupid, um, those types of uh, trying to think other ones coming out better than me, fake, you know, all those sorts of things. And they're often linked to uh, our perception of something, believing that we have to behave in a certain way to be accepted. And then there's beliefs that we actually just have about ourselves, whether we think we're boring, stupid, uh, too young, too old, uh, awkward, all those sorts of things. Um, or perhaps that we actually can't change things. And none of these are facts. These are stories we are telling ourselves. So what do you notice? Where might you be holding limiting beliefs? So just, I'm not gonna put you into breakout rooms, I know better than that, half of you will disappear. But um, let's just ask, um, what other thoughts, if you're happy to talk into them, that'd be great, or put thoughts in. So what do you notice going through, when I've gone through that in terms of where they come from, does anything resonate with anybody? It's quite often when I've done coaching things with people and we've talked through to try and identify limiting beliefs. When we start digging around, you know, they'll pick up something from really early childhood and recognise that they've just interpreted that and stored it um, as a fact, which is what they're referring to on a daily basis. The bit that's stopping them jumping out of bed in the morning and doing all the things in a way they want to. So what have you noticed? Any observations anybody would like to add or put into the chat? I think, um, as you say, I think a lot of it does stem from very early childhood. And even though you might tell yourself that it's just a a, a thought, it's still sometimes very difficult oh. to move from that, especially if you're having a, a low day or there's lots going on at, at, at mm -hmm. work and mm -hmm. there's somebody there that might just remind you of that work that home or, or early life incident so yeah yeah absolutely I mean they're so deeply wired that that makes it so hard and then because they are there we then find all the you know the evidence that reinforces it um that then makes it even harder yeah experience at primary school yeah relationships yeah yes we get used to messaging and we start to believe it even though at one level we know it's not true, it becomes so much part of our programming. Any other observations? Teasing me, yeah. Didn't fit in, thank you for sharing that. Yes. And, and that, that I think that, Janine, thank you for that one. That's a really interesting one because often, you know, we, realize that we've responded to something and we've come to believe something, but actually it was as much about somebody else's self-worth and their own beliefs um, that are actually part of the story. Yes. Thank you. Marion, do you think yeah. it's about your own confidence as well and how you feel about yourself? Because I always remember um, when I was at school, there was a lad that used to pick on me, but I just used to think that this lad was a bit of an idiot because he was. And I, f I think because I was quite happy with who I was, I, I was able to brush it off. But I know mm -hmm. a lot of people wouldn't have been able to do that and they would have taken it to heart. I think, you know, there are so many different constructs and things that we can talk about and they are all interrelated. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, but again, where does confidence come from? You know, is that part of from the messaging that you've got uh, as a young child? Is it that nature? Is it that nurture? So yes, I think it's about that wider psychological resources we've got, that resilience we've got, as well as things like the confidence, the the challenging, you know, whether we're, if somebody says something um, unpleasant to us, if somebody's teasing us, are we using it to um, 
reinforce a limiting belief or using it to to reinforce or relating it to something that's that's positive that you had a message saying you know you know that's not true and you've got all this evidence so some of it is about what are we uh relating it to how whether we're using it to refer to good things or bad things in terms of reinforcement but i mean it, all of these things are, are so complicated in terms of people and psychology and uh, i'm not going to pretend to, to give answers on any of that so thank you another one that's So what I'd like us to think a bit more about now is thinking about any that we might have. So if doing this in, in coaching, um, it, it's safe to sort of dig quite deep and to, to help people and um, to work. And, but that's in a very different sort of space. So um, I don't want to, we haven't got time anyway to, to be going into this deeply. And sometimes this can be quite emotional in terms of uh, realisations about things. So be kind to yourself and a bit mindful of this. But if you want, think of something that you would like to do something that's on your list that you would like to do, but it's not happening. Reflect for a moment and listen to that internal narrative. Listen to the words that you're saying, and I'm not going to um, ask you to put that into the chat, just but just note it down. Note down what you're actually noticing as the language. So if you can think of something specific, then it's much easier to do this. So it's something that's on your real, oh, I'd really love to do that, but and it can be in relation to work, it can be in relation to any areas of your life. It, it doesn't matter, you know, limiting beliefs do not sit nicely and neatly in one area of our world. They may manifest differently but they're part of our programming. So think about one sort of, uh, one particular thing you'd like to do and notice that narrative. And write down those specific words and that will give you an indication of some of the things that might be identified. Limiting beliefs can be called, can be all sorts of things. Um, you know, not good enough um, is one of them. Um, I'm stupid, I don't fit in. They're all very common ones. But just notice that for a moment, anything that you've identified, what you've noticed. Sometimes it can be things, uh, yeah, very simple things, like you send a message to somebody and they don't reply. And what are the messages you're telling themselves, telling yourself, oh, you know, they don't like me, I'm not good enough. Um, if you're asked to do something new at work, what's your instinctive thought? Is it, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I'll get caught out, or is it, you know, this is a brilliant opportunity. Yes, I don't know what I'm doing fully, but I'm looking forward to learning. You know, just really noticing that narrative. And recognising part of that challenge is sometimes we listen to that narrative instinctively, and then we create that self-fulfilling prophecy. We have around 64,000 thoughts a day, 95% are the, are the same ones as we had yesterday. So actually, that's going to happen. So changing our limiting beliefs can be hard. And there is um, a range of different things that you can do. So they're hard because they've been embedded for a long time. And we can be persist, particularly resistant to changing them if they have been put there to keep us safe, which most of them are. And we will find making change hard, um, making the changes hard because of the depth of that wiring, because it takes us into um, uncertain territory that might feel um, uncomfortable. You know, we, we want to stay in our comfort zone when we move out of that. By definition, it becomes less comfortable until we adapt to it, until it becomes part of what we're comfortable. And we'll need to understand and believe we can do things differently. We have to change it as a belief. But if we recognise the benefits of doing that, the opportunities it gives us to do things in a new and different way, you know, how different would life feel? Not just the actual things that you might be doing, but just how it would make you feel. And we have to, to be able to do that, we have to really take responsibility and work at it. it we can't just do this in five minutes at the end of the session. We will have to work at it. So I'll go through this, but just as again, as a safety reminder, this is as a general um, practice. Um, I would suggest you, you 
go through it in detail on, on your own in, in the place that feels uh, safe and where you have more time. So start with thinking about a particular limiting belief that you had, recognizing that it's likely to have been founded on false information, it's likely to be completely untrue, or elements of it may be true in some context, because a uh, limiting belief like not good enough may be factually correct in some context. It's when it's as a belief that stops us trying for things that would enable us to grow and learn that it becomes a limiting belief. So if we've got a particular belief, start by really recognizing that's what it is. It is a belief, it is not a fact. So find a very specific belief that you can play with for this. I'm gonna use the word play with for this exercise because um, we can use it as an ex opportunity to practice it. And then we want to challenge it. So we need to challenge it knowing that it is just a belief rather than a fact. So we need to question it, challenge the false thinking that you have been taken, taking it as a fact. So what are the supporting facts for this belief? What things have happened that have evidenced that? Did I always think this way? If not, what changed? If we want to challenge it, is there evidence that's contradicting my belief? So if my limiting belief is I'm not good enough, where's there contradictory evidence? Where have I been good enough? And there will be an awful lot of examples So really build up a list of all the contradictory evidence. And then think about what would it be like to think the opposite of my belief? What if it was your thinking, your default was totally the opposite end of it? And is my belief helping me progress towards my goals? So we're challenging it. Is it serving you well? My definition, they're not usually, but just challenging that perspective. We can rationalize why it's been doing that. So remember to be kind to yourself in this. And what would I think about this belief if I was someone else? Perhaps, you know, pick somebody you admire. If you were to tell somebody that knows you well some, that this is what you have, you think about yourself, what would they say and what evidence would they give you? And then we've done that challenging. We need to actually recognise the consequences of holding that belief. So what is happening because that limiting belief is driving your behaviour? What are the things that you're missing out on? What are the things might you have achieved? What could you do next? How is it impacting your well-being, your health? The fun you have in life, happiness. So we've done the challenging, we've recognized the consequences, we realize it's not serving us well, even though the intention was good. So now we have to program ourselves for a new belief. What would you like as this new belief? What would serve you better and help improve your life? Now this takes a bit of time to think about because we need to use different language because our, it, our brain will make too many connections. So if we go from a belief that says I'm not good enough to a belief that I am good enough, it's too close. It won't help us in terms of changing it. So we have to create something else that actually describes who we are, what we want to be in a language that we really like. So draw on things that you know are strengths. If anybody's done things on work on strengths, you know, what you know 
says that you you've got these really good traits and think about something what would you like as your internal mantra to replace that limiting belief what would be liberating and empowering for you this can take time to sort of evolve and think about find language say that just grabs your imagination language that you want to have as your default thinking and when you found that language when you found your new belief you have to really believe it so then we talk about the idea of state management so not just staying it internally but actually saying it out loud adapting your body posture saying as you mean it do this on your own when you're on your court in the quiet when you feel comfortable to do it but actually that's really about how you manage the state it's not just saying the words but actually being that liberated revised empowered person of yourself but get that and really get that um into that place and recite it and learn it as that person There are things that you can do, um, sort of NLP techniques, where you can learn to sort of anchor that. You can get to that state and then really um, save it as a memory in your mind and in your body. But for now, just have that new belief, that liberating, empowering belief. And then we have to practice it because sadly it's not quite as straightforward as just challenging the old one and creating a new one. We have to start to live it we have to practice it. We have to use it. We have to test it. We have to reinforce it. So in all the same ways that we found evidence to reinforce the limiting belief, we have to create the evidence to reinforce the empowering belief. So find small actions to test that belief. Set yourself up for success. Test it in a way that is comfortable. Creating that new reality they want you want to have. And continue to do this, you know, for lots of people, having that belief, you you can make it work for you in lots of ways. You can have it as a, um, a mantra that you repeat. You could have it as a, a note attached to your kettle. So when you get up in the morning, you have a reminder. You could have it as something on your phone. You could have a reflective time at the end of the day saying, right, what have I done today? How have I drawn on my new belief if I look back? How could I have used it more proactively and train your thinking, practice it and find the rewards. Notice what went well, because the more we get that positive reinforcement from that new belief, the more we can embed it, the more it can become that empowering belief that we turn to rather than that old one. So I would really encourage you to, to invest some time in doing this, accepting it's not overnight accepting it you know it's been hardwired in a long time for a lot of these ones so we can't suddenly discard it and replace it we have to work at it we have to practice it the same as we would for other things but understanding our beliefs is an essential step to growing it's the essential step of becoming the best versions of ourselves and by helping ourselves to access this we can improve and avoid those things that are holding you back. It can open doors that you've previously just kept shut because of old beliefs and convictions, particularly if they've been there for a long time. But be mindful, this won't always be comfortable. You know, it pushes us out of those habitual thinking patterns which can feel safe. But ultimately there's nothing stopping us changing our beliefs other than our own mind. Although I do recognize this is a powerful restriction, which is why we have to work at it. It's not as simple as just change, choosing a new belief. We have to work at bringing about that change. But the persistence will really bring the rewards. You'll start to notice the benefits. You'll get that positive reinforcement, um, which will give you more resources, which will make you feel better, which will make you do allow you to do even more. You'll start to notice the decisions you make it based on a new, more powerful belief. So I would really encourage you to practice. Keep it going, embed it, and feel the benefits.
I'll do some questions, but I'll just put that one up for now, and then I'll put the slides down and, and talk to you. That, this is who I am. This is what I do. Um, my main program is um, Unleashing You, which is a positive psychology-based program for personal and organization performance, engagement, and well-being, available as a full program or modules. I do a lot of mental health first aid um, and mental health awareness and a lot of work around self-care and positive resilience. So if you're interested um, in any of those, please let me know and get in touch afterwards. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. Questions, thoughts, challenges, observations? Be interested either into the group, into the chat. I'd be really interested to hear. Thank you. Lots of processing going on there, I think. Yeah, that's fine. I'm actually quite comfortable with that. <laughs> the cogs whirring. Yeah. Yeah, writing things down, definitely. But it is, um, I would really, you know, encourage you, I know, I know Joe will give you the option that you can get the slides afterwards or, you know, um, but that exercise, it's not easy, it's not comfortable, it's not quick, but actually things that make a real difference to our lives really are. Um, so I would encourage you to um, persist with it. And actually, you know, notice those small wins. It's those small wins that can build the confidence, the energy, the resources to, to stick with it. So so do just because you know the end's, end is worth it. So, okay. Any questions? It doesn't look like there's a few comments going in this chat apart from that. So, okay. I think I can hand back to you, Joe. No worries. Thank you very much, Marion. Lots of food for thought there, I'm sure. And I think that's what everyone else is sort of thinking as well. Um, I will send out an email this afternoon to everyone that signed up for the event and I'll put a post on LinkedIn. So if you'd like a copy of the slides and or the recording, then please put a comment against the LinkedIn post. Our next event is actually at the end of April, Tuesday, the 30th of April at 12.30. And it's called How HR Can Radically Influence Culture. Details about how to sign up for the event will be included in the email. Uh, we will send out uh, a quick survey to everyone that's attended this afternoon. So if you've got a couple of minutes to share some feedback, then that would be appreciated. If anyone is recruiting, we've also got accountancy recruit, FD recruit and exec recruit within the group. But otherwise, I'd just like to say a massive thanks to Marion for your time and putting the event together and also to everyone that signed in and uh, hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm.